A cursed marsh. Said to be haunted. Hostile and harsh. A place of deep peril. A true quagmire. For those who get stuck. Face a fate most dire. Ladies, gents, boys, girls, duggers, diggets, ishimans, Dak Nanaway, the dig dug himself, and today we're going to look at Jiratotos. So for those who are initiated, you should already know, but for those who aren't, Jiratotos is a monster who came out in the 5th generation, the current gen that we're in, but came out in Monster Hunter World. In that game, it was the only monster in the game that actually gave you water weapons. However, it was a tier 2 monster, which gave a lot of people a lot of concern, like how the heck are we going to use weapons from this monster and hope that they're viable? To monsters that are weak to water. Well, they can circumvented that by not having any monsters that's worth a damn weak to water. That's not the case anymore. It's not the only water monster. And because no one ever needed to use its weapons, no one ever used, well, no one really ever fought the monster, you had to fight the monster. So it wasn't the lowest fought monster, but no one really fought him. No one really needed anything from him. You never made his gear. You never made any of the armor or any of the weapons. I mean, you made the weapons off of principle. But you didn't have to use any of the weapons off of principle because nothing was weak to water. Not the case anymore, and because that my man got some buffs. First and foremost, you have to explicitly fight my man in high rank. That is correct. You can only fight this monster in high rank. And going forward for these next couple videos, they're exclusively monster you can not okay that's a lie there's no yeah that's actually right there's only the only monster we have left are monsters explicitly and exclusively in high rank alone now this isn't a new thing to monster hunter there's always been monsters that were exclusive to high rank but Jiratotos is the first of the couple that we're going to get into nevertheless with that said now that we're finding Jiratotos, let's talk about a couple of unique things that we need to really talk about first and foremost as always if you want to do the biggest damage to him big number if you will you have to hit him in the head you can do this with anything, be it blunt, blade, or even gun and weapons. The head is the weakest part of the body. Now, with that said, that is not the weakest part of the body elemental-wise. So if you're going to use some elemental stuff, which I recommend you do, unless you have some really high raw weapons, uh, you want to actually use the legs. The legs are actually the weakest elemental spot, and for what element you're going to use, believe it or not, thunder. I know it's weird. It, it's weird to think that something that's water, well, mud, if you will, is actually weak to, you know, electricity when usually that's not the case. I mean, Pokemon has instilled that into us. Ground type Pokemon uh, aren't affected by electrical damage whatsoever. But this is Monster Hunter. It's a little different. So, bring you some Zenogre stuff. I know you got some Zenogre stuff laying in the cut. We all love Zenogre. If not Juratotos, not Juratotos, Toby Kadachi has your back. Uh, as far as weapons go, use basically anything. I mean,. Muddy Saw did get buffed. He did get buffed a little bit, but he's still not a woolly, strange, and tough monster to fight. He does all those regular suite of things where he'll just, I would, I would say go on the ground, but he'll just go under the water, if you will, the two inches of water that's in the flooded forest, and he'll hide himself from you. He'll do this, but all he's really going to do is try to come up underneath you again and, like, launch you in the sky. It's He's not very wild with it. The, mo the most um, ambitious things he'll do underwater, if you will, is he'll he'll use a hip check. He has a hip check now that he'll use, he'll use underwater. Outside of that, he likes to shoot the bu the, bu the, bleh, the buds of mud, the balls of mud, <laughs> all around, making it to where you yourself can't have an incredibly solid footing. And when fighting him, your footing is going to be your most important thing. If you don't have solid footing when fighting a monster like him, him moving around the way in which he does, going under the water, sliding all the way to the left, sliding all the way to the right, it's kind of difficult to really keep hold to him if you can't move. And the, mm, I would say the cool thing, it's cool, but it's annoying. What the mud does is when you actually touch the mud, it drains your stamina. Your mobilities, your actions are completely limited. It's almost a death sentence if you're in like a dire situation. And he throws this mud all over the place, so you have to really watch out for that. Now, if you use a water weapon, you can actually wash the mud off his body and get rid of the mud that he has thrown all over the ground. Kind of like washing it away with well, with water, if you will. Um, outside of that, there's not a whole lot more to talk about. Juratotos, he does have the attack that I talk about where he goes under the water and shoots way up in the sky and lands again. That is like his hardest hitting attack. He has another attack where he stands up on two feet 
and well, he'll be out of the water on two feet, and he'll shoot the mud ball, and then sidestep, shoot another mud ball, and sidestep again, shoot another mud, another mud ball, and sidestep. It's kind of cool. It almost looks, honestly, if you're, if you know, whenever you get to weapon ride a Jirotodos, well, when you get to weapon ride a Jirotodos, I think it's his light attack. He'll shoot a mud ball. And then whenever you shoot a mud ball, you cancel the animation with the evade, emergency evade, and do it again. That's literally what it looks like. It's kind of cool though, worth noting, he'll do it three times. It looks a little odd, so watch out for that. Um, other than that, that's essentially all we can really talk about Jirotodos. He's not a crazy monster. There's not a whole lot going on with him. He did get buffed, but he's still not a fantastical monster. Uh, his gear is pretty good, so let's take a look at it. Of okay, so his weapons and armor. Let's talk about him briefly. His armor is pretty good. I I like it. I personally believe that it's more akin to that of maybe like a charge blade, and you can kind of get away with some stuff for like lance and so on. Um, its skills: offensive guard, evade, extend there, power prolonger, and guard up. Now these skills are all very good in and of themselves, all on their own. I would love to have them on most of my sets but the thing that gives it away to me that likes it and likes likens it to be a charge blade weapon armor set is the power for longer lance has no need for it nevertheless offensive guard so for those who don't know let's take a gander what offensive guard does is when you block at like the right moment like those that last frame of blocking you get an attack boast boast bonus boost and bonus boast whatever anyway so with two points of it you get attack plus 10 percent so 10 percent of your already whatever your attack is so let's say it's 200 you get 20 more attacks pretty cool it lasts for like 30 seconds or so evade extender in increases evade distance it's always really really good i personally like two points of evade extender because three it, i mean you you can get the schmoovin with three but two makes it viable to where you can still move in and out and still attack at the same time especially for lance users power for longer increases the time in which your charge up power stays last longer and there we go charge blades stay up stay powered up longer that's the shield and the sword uh where you can power those things up that's why i feel like this is more charge blade armor set and then you have guard up the ability to block things you usually couldn't before and so on also reduces the the chip damage you take so that's kind of cool Actually, it sucks, but whatever it's kind of cool nevertheless So I mean it's pretty solid you can get away with it for the charge blade and also get away with it Well, like some lance or whatever, but if you want to run lance with it I recommend throwing some guard skills in there But that's neither here nor there because it's a lot harder to actually get decorations the game than what it used to be Nevertheless, let's move over to its weapons its weapons. They're okay Its weapons are okay. He doesn't have a lot. He has like four or five gray sword Long sword, switch axe, charge blade? And I think that's it. But let's take a look at the great sword, because with the great sword, you kind of see everything you really need to see that his weapon actually provides. And it's basically the same for everyone else. So, completely maxed out, we're looking at 210 attack, an okay amount of blue sharpness, and about 20 water with negative 10 affinity. That number set goes for all of his weapons, save for the switch axe, I believe, doesn't even hit blue. But everything else stays the same. The attack being 210 to 230-ish, that's kind of that numbered mark. I'm pretty sure the charge blades are 230. And the elemental uh, number being around like 20 or so. And the negative affinity always being there. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's it's pretty good. It's not the best, but I guess if you really want it, it's the raw water weapon. Because there's a couple of water weapons in the game. You have Royal Lou Droth, which stops being good. After a while, you have Tetra, you have Meizu, I mean, it's just another water weapon. They're pretty good, and in my opinion, if you don't like the others and you kind of want something with a little more oomph in the raw department, this will kind of hold you over. And they're usually not too expensive to make, so that also helps too. So to wrap it up, what can I say about the Jirototos? He's not a bad monster. He's been buffed. There's small things that he has now that he didn't have before. And it's actually a good thing. It's not every time that they actually transition a monster from one game to the next and they buff it. Tobikadachi got the most buffs out of all the monsters who returned from World. But Jirito's got a couple of buffs too. He's a little bit more scrappier, if you will, before he kind of just bleh, laid there. So with that said, he can fight back a little bit. He does really, really, really lean into the whole mud situation. 
but forward not so often like in world he didn't really throw it around that much in this game he does he throws it around more often he likes to just throw it everywhere honestly he does it in different fashions usually he'll just kind of throw one on the ground and call it a day this time he'll lay like a whole line of mud he'll throw the mud balls he'll stand up and shoot mud balls at you you know he's he's more he's more with it and again in order to do the most damage to him you want to hit him in the head but unless you really are about the elemental life the head isn't where it's at you actually want to hit him in the legs bring thunder if you're doing that if not I strongly suggest you use Diablos weapons. Up to this point, you probably just fought a Diablos, maybe, I don't know. But if you've not fought Diablos, I recommend it. He has incredible raw weapons. They have negative affinity though, but they have some of the highest raw in the game. Bring that if you wanna actually come and fight him, use big number. That's what I did in this hunt, and it's why I usually tend to do when I fight him. Outside of that, he's Jared Sotos. He's not the hardest thing in the world. He's not the craziest monster to fight. But um, he's pretty solid. I'm actually really happy that they buffed him a little bit, made his weapons a lot more viable, made his gear a lot more viable because back in the day it wasn't viable at all. Uh, it actually gave a skill that was exclusively to him to use to fight monsters like basically just him and Barrett. The only monster actually had like mud. But then they like stealth buffed that particular skill later on. Nevertheless, the whole point of this is you want to watch out for the mud. Watch out where you place the mud. Uh, where he places the mud you shouldn't be any real danger when fighting him he's not totally he's not super difficult funnily enough up to this point he's basically a monster you would fight before you start to fight flagship monsters so you should be you should be used to the type of danger this type of monster provides doesn't really provide a whole lot of challenge but he can kind of catch his limb from time to time but with that said, everyone, it's been your boy Dak908 aka the Dig Dug himself. Uh, thanks so much for watching today. If you're watching this video the day this video came out, um, this is one of many, many, many videos coming out today. I don't expect you all to watch it, but I, I'm i doing it this way so that way I can completely get done with the entire Monster and Arise decks for the time being. Um, as I'm speaking to you right now, I am not actually ready to fight what's his face. Uh, I forget what the monster is called. I literally don't know what the name of the monster is. I just know him as American Airlines. I can't fight American Airlines just yet, so I have to grind a little bit to get to him. But I'm going to release every single other monster video that's, that this game has as soon as I can, like in one day. So hopefully you can watch that those videos and even this one and be like, okay, I see what you're doing here, Dak. But with that said, everyone, it's been your boy. Discord, Twitter, those social media things, if you want them, they're in the description, of course. Um, we're fun people. We like to hang out a lot in the Discord. We like to hunt, we like to play other games, whatever. I'm a cool person. Follow me on Twitter, please. I'm very lonely. Well, that said, it's been your boy. Take care.